Africa, the dark continent, home of unique fauna. But Africa is far more than just an extraordinary natural paradise. For according to recent discoveries, the vast plains of this untouched landscape are where the seeds of human existence first were sown. birth of mankind took place in Kenya. This country is also important geographically due to its great rift valley, the East African Ditch. Africa's culture has been enriched by the proud and famous Maasai, a noble tribe of herdsmen. The large plains of Kenya and Tanzania are their homeland, and up to 400,000 Maasai live here. The picturesque Lake Naivasha area is where they live, a region that is well known for its wildlife. The idyllic Lake Naivasha is vital to the fauna that grows here and also for the birds of the Rift Valley. What would the African continent be without its many wonderful creatures? Here the balance of nature is still very much intact. This is due to conservation, for without the establishment of several nature reserves such as the Amboseli National Park, many species would have become extinct. The park's landscape has for many centuries been the proud possession of the Maasai. As the Maasai did not tolerate foreign hunters, the area of Ambozeli at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro has in the main been spared from poachers. Much of the summit of the huge mountain is covered by cloud. At 5,895 meters above sea level, Mount Kilimanjaro is Africa's highest mountain. Eighteen hundred meters above sea level is Lake Nakuru. Due to the large numbers of birds that live here, it's a veritable paradise for ornithologists. Large mammals also inhabit the Lakeland area. And it's a good hunting ground for the local lions. At the end of the food chain, vultures wait patiently for the remains of dead animals that have been abandoned by the various predators that hunt in Africa's huge wilderness. However, despite the conservation measures of recent years, many species continue to be threatened by extinction. Lake Baringo is unique among the lakes of the Great Rift Valley. Apart from Lake Naivasha, Lake Baringo is the only fresh water lake in the eastern section of the Great Ditch. The lake contains an abundance of fish that feed not only the local human population, 
but also the many members of Africa's animal kingdom. The volcanic past of the region becomes obvious on the eastern banks of the lake. Here, several sulfur springs bubble up from the rocky terrain. Lake Bogoria is also an important lake of the East African ditch. It's famous due to the very large numbers of splendid flamingos that come here each year in order to breed. Tens of thousands of flamingos transform Lake Bogoria into a colorful spectacle and its many geysers give the landscape an air of mystique. The hot springs highlight the enormous energy that lies beneath the Earth's surface. For the lake's wildlife, these springs are extremely dangerous. South Africa. Located at the southern tip of Africa, it's surrounded by two oceans, the Atlantic and the Indian. Both the country and its inhabitants are in many ways remarkable. Here, the cultural variety of several ethnic communities has been well maintained. The Lesedi cultural village is home to members of the Pedi, Zulu, Xhosa, Basoto and Indibiri tribes. It provides a fascinating insight into the traditional ways of life of South Africa's five most important ethnic groups. The Xhosa and Zulu belong to the Bantu tribe that comprises a total of 400 ethnic groups. Bantu originated from the Cameroon Highlands. Over time, they were gradually forced out by the Maasai to the more southerly regions. Even today, dance plays an important role in the cultural life of many African tribes. The dancers are based upon ancient traditions and are performed on a large number of occasions, both ceremonial and social. The landscape of Africa is as multifaceted as its cultures. The 26 kilometer long Blyde River Canyon is a special wonder of nature. In some sections, it's up to 800 meters deep. The region's rivers and creeks have carved their way into the reddish sandstone of the Transvaal Drakens Mountains. At the junction of the Troyer and Blyde rivers are various potholes, fascinating cylindrical whirlpools. Over the centuries, the local people lived here undisturbed. But their way of life was transformed by the discovery of gold in this region. The suppression of the indigenous tribes by colonial rule and later the harsh regime of apartheid have not taken away their cultural inheritance. Right. 
Although colonial times harmed the indigenous wildlife, it managed to survive and fully recover due to the establishment of the country's numerous national parks. The Kruger National Park in the northeast of the Transvaal has frequently been described as a kind of Noah's Ark. Several rivers provide the water for each of the animals, both large and small, that inhabit Kruger. This impressive landscape is an ideal habitat for many species of wildlife. The most southerly region of Africa features some of the most spectacular natural landscapes on the planet. The rocks of Nysna, the heads and the Indian Ocean combine to create a wonderful natural spectacle. A local youth is fascinated by the foreign visitors and their camera equipment. Garden Route, one of South Africa's most popular tourist destinations, boasts many breathtaking views. Characteristic of the flora of the coastal region of Nysna is the Finbos vegetation with its large variety of sclerophyllous plants and heathers. The Neissner Lagoon is flanked by two imposing sandstone cliffs. The rock provides a natural protection from the immense power of the ocean. With a total surface area of 18 square kilometers, the lagoon resembles a lake although its water originates from the Indian Ocean. In addition to its unique vegetation, the southern end of Cape Peninsula has a steep and dramatic coastline. For the seafarers of old, and the great explorers of bygone times, the stormy seas and rocky coastline of South Africa posed a serious threat. The rough seas and hazardous coastal region of the Cape spelled disaster for many a ship. Nevertheless, the ocean is a wonderful sight. Namibia, in the southwest of Africa, is one of the most captivating countries in the world. It's dominated by two vast deserts, the Namib and the Kalahari, and in the west it features a splendid coastal landscape. The beauty of the endless and dreamlike beaches of this region can be deceptive, as hinted by its name of the Skeleton Coast. The hostile Namib Desert runs along the Atlantic Ocean. Moon Valley is like a bizarre and enchanted world of sand and rock.
In the language of the local Nama people, the word Namib means area of nothingness. A fitting description when considering the sparse landscape. A large section of the skeleton coast is one of the oldest visible stone formations on Earth. The oldest of them being 1.5 billion years old. But despite the hostile terrain, a number of fascinating creatures have successfully adapted to the extreme conditions. Plants such as the Velvicia mirabilis are several hundred years old. They are the true masters of survival of the Namib Desert. The Velvicia Drive, a 50 kilometer long gravel road in the surroundings of Swakopmund, is part of a unique national park. The Namib Naukluft Park covers an area of around 50,000 square kilometers. The quiver tree derived its name from the local bushmen. They hollowed out the branches of the tall aloe trees and make quivers from them. The desert seems to be without end, its blistering heat, its aridness. It's hardly surprising that it was not inhabited by man until quite recently. A family of ostriches relaxes in the shade. Despite the heat, a few kilometers from the desert, a number of local farmers breed animals. The dune landscape of Sosis Vlai is one of the most famous natural wonders in Namibia. Indeed, its impressive dunes are the largest in the world. Especially famous is Dune 45. Its shining sand has been immortalized by many amazing photographs. At 300 meters above sea level, number nine is the highest dune in Sosis Vlai. The magnificent sand rises up in all its glory. And for some 70 kilometers, the majestic dunes line the road. Extremely high temperatures and little rainfall make for sparse vegetation in this area. The enormous dimensions of the desert become obvious when driving on the gravel roads that seem to lead forever across the unspoiled landscape. The closer one approaches civilization, the better the roads. But the natural beauty of the landscape remains unscathed. We fly across the remoteness of the Namib Naukluft Park and continue to travel north of Namibia. The view across the desert landscape is an unforgettable experience. From here, one can begin to understand the huge dimensions of this impressive nature reserve that extends for some 50,000 square kilometers. In the north of Namibia is yet another wonderful nature reserve. 
In contrast to Namib, it bristles with life. The Atosha National Park features most species of wildlife. The land here resembles a kind of Garden of Eden. Around 110 types of mammal live in the park. Its heart is the Atosha salt pan. Itosha. In the local Oshivambo language, the most spoken language in Namibia, the name of this landscape means large white area. An understatement, considering its fascinating animal kingdom. Zimbabwe, the large stone house as it is known in the language of the Shona. Here is one of the most spectacular natural wonders in Africa, the Victoria Falls. These breathtaking waterfalls were discovered by a famous Scottish missionary and explorer, Dr. David Livingston, who named them after the British Queen. Until its discovery in 1855, the existence and location of the waterfalls was only known by the local people. When Dr. Livingston saw the foaming water masses of the Zambezi for the first time, his eyes were full of awe. Seventeen hundred meters wide, the waters of the otherwise calm and slow flowing Zambezi plunge a hundred meters down into the depths below. Which geological events created the canyon and waterfalls is still unknown by science. When at its highest, 10,000 cubic meters of water a minute tumble into the narrow canyon. The flying spray from the roaring water masses of the Zambezi created the environment that eventually gave rise to the surrounding rainforests. For some time now, the Victoria Falls has become a symbol for the unrestrained power of the water that rages down into the depths below. So it's hardly surprising that these waterfalls play an important role in local culture. Each African tribe has its own traditional music and characteristic dances. This cultural heritage has been well protected. The various dances not only feature masculine rites, dances of love and romance also include feminine gestures. The most common dances in Western Africa are the Yankadi and the Makru, which are both quite different. While the Yankadi is gentle and slow, the Makru is full of energy. The love dances play an important role in traditional village communities and provide a good opportunity to find a partner, a reason for their popularity. 
Such ritual dances have created many happy couples. Dance also plays a central role in the faith of African tribes. They act as a means of communication with various spirits. Both masks and figures have a symbolic meaning and are often used to fend off evil spirits and disease. The crocodile is worshipped throughout Africa. During such dances, spirits are worshipped as well as ancestors and deities that often take possession of those performing the dance. In Botswana, the western neighbor of Zimbabwe, are some of the most beautiful landscapes in Africa with endless, untouched wilderness. In recent years, the Okavango Delta has developed into a popular, though exclusive, tourist destination. Some of its lodges are of the highest standard. As large areas are covered with water throughout the entire year, small motorboats are a most important mode of transport in the delta. Remote areas are readily accessible only by boat. Large areas of water, rivers and extensive swamps are frequently interrupted by small islands and forests. The Okavango Riding Camp enjoys an exceptional position among the lodges of the Delta. Its riding safaris offer an exciting and unique opportunity to explore the surrounding area. However, providing more comfort and also more safety are the boat tours. The large variety of indigenous animals makes a complete and perfect picture of the African wilderness. But the idyll can be deceptive. For many years, Africa's wild animals were hunted almost to extinction. The big game hunters showed little mercy to their prey. It was only in the 20th century that the dangers of uncontrolled poaching were recognized and measures taken to protect the unique wildlife and fauna. But for some species, this has proved to be too late. The Chobe River is one of the most important tributaries of the Zambezi and flows through four different countries. In each country, it's known by another name. The water attracts numerous creatures from the surrounding areas. From the boat, we have a good view of Cape Buffalo and Hippopotamus, of which the latter should be treated with great respect as they can be extremely unpredictable. The local fishermen are well used to the dangers of their surroundings, and although their catch is rather small, both men appear to be quite happy. Herds of elephants are often seen here. Thirst frequently drives these pachyderms to the banks of the Chobe River.
The behavior patterns and lifestyle of the animals depends upon the seasons of the year and the various climatic conditions that they bring. The life of the people whose ancestors settled here many centuries ago is also geared to the seasons. The villages on the islands of the Chobe River are not inhabited for the entire year. During the rainy season, their inhabitants move to more secure areas. The main means of transport of the local fishermen are the makoros, traditional log boats that are up to four meters long. Sometimes elephants cross the river to search for food on the other side. The wildlife here can always find nourishment somewhere. The Kalahari in Botswana is one of the most sparsely populated areas of the world, yet it's been inhabited for thousands of years. The Bushmen of the Kalahari are proud of their long history. For around 25,000 years, they have lived here in harmony with both nature and their environment and continue to stick to their ancient traditions. The San are a tribe of hunter-gatherers and they continue to use their extraordinary knowledge of nature right up to the present day. With just a few skillful movements of the hand, they prepare a small trap. To survive the long dry periods in the Kalahari, the San have a guaranteed supply of water, contained in ostrich eggs. After a short drink, the water-filled egg is closed up and reburied in the earth. Shortly afterwards, the men begin to dig again. This time, they reveal a special bulb from which they can also gain nourishment. Because of their nomadic lifestyle, the San have numerous hunting huts in the Kalahari that provide them with protection during sandstorms. Here, both men demonstrate one of the most important skills known to man, the creation of fire. It may look easy, but it actually requires much patience and skill. Bushmen still hunt with simple weapons such as a bow, arrow and spear. But today, they have caught nothing. The Kalahari is the final refuge of the sun. Therefore, this special landscape not only contributes to the protection of nature, but also guarantees the conservation of a unique African tribe. Tanzania on the east coast of Africa has for many years been a settlement for traders who had commercial relationships with the Arab regions. And even today, they're a common sight.
Many colorful markets contain an abundance of exotic and unusual spices, and there's always something new to see. Close to the town of Arusha is the national park of the same name. Though relatively small, its landscape is quite remarkable. In addition to around 400 varieties of birds, the Arusha Nature Park is home to many well-known members of Africa's animal kingdom. The observation of wildlife is easy here. Everywhere is full of life, especially the surroundings of the Momela Lakes. The rhinoceros that once inhabited the Arusha area are now no more due to the devastation caused by heavy poaching. To enjoy the full splendor of Africa's highest mountain, it's a good idea to see the spectacular Mount Kilimanjaro from the air. For most of the time, its summit is covered in cloud. The landscape of the Arusha National Park is as diverse as the animals and plants that are to be found there. Many small villages developed around the park. Lake Manyara has also suffered from a long dry period. It's almost totally dried out, and as with the local inhabitants, this area is longing for a good fall of rain. Despite the lack of rainfall, the wildlife has not left the area. In a few weeks, the rainy season will begin to fill up the lakes and rivers and transform the landscape into a shining sea of green. Until then, the wildlife must make do. Monkeys take up much of their time with personal hygiene and the care of their young. Due to the present dry spell, this herd of elephants must travel a long distance in order to reach the next waterhole. The road that travels to the Ngorongono crater leads to a rural landscape. The crater contains some unusual vegetation. The rim road that leads along the edge of the crater is also used by the local Maasai herdsmen and the cattle. The 260 square kilometer Ngorongoro crater is often referred to as being one of the most impressive natural paradises on Earth. The cattle of the Maasai have grazed at the bottom of the crater for thousands of years. But today, they pose a problem for the wildlife there. However, although the Maasai are officially forbidden to take the cattle there, no one appears to take much notice of the regulations. The waterholes used by the hippos are avoided by the other wildlife. The Ngorongoro crater has always been of the greatest importance to the Maasai because even during the driest periods, it's a wonderful source of drinking water. In fact, the living conditions are so good at the bottom of the crater that animals that would normally be nomadic have made their home there.
It's not only plant eaters that take advantage of the food on offer within the crater. Lions and other predators also enjoy this habitat. In the north of Tanzania, on the edge of the Serengeti, there are also Maasai and their herds, although large areas of this region are subject to strict conservation. Up until the middle of the 20th century, there were many villages here, but today the people live outside the Serengeti National Park. After the villagers have given us a warm and friendly welcome, they perform a special Maasai ritual. The ululations of the young men are one of the most famous ceremonies of the Maasai. These movements are highly competitive. The ululations are meant to demonstrate the strength of the adolescent Maasai, who are known as the Morani. They are of great social significance. The women also enjoy much prestige in Maasai culture and have a lot of responsibility for the welfare of the villages. For some years, small, quite modest schools have been one of the most important improvements in the otherwise traditional life of the Maasai. The large treeless savanna of the Serengeti is a real paradise for wildlife and is home to thousands of predators and countless plant eaters. Despite its huge dimensions, almost 15,000 square kilometers, the Serengeti National Park covers only half the entire Serengeti region. The endless savanna is bursting with life. Creatures of various shapes and sizes roam the plains of the Serengeti. They fill this unique natural landscape with life. The Africa of old is still very much alive here. Hippo pools are home to a vast number of hippopotamus. The cheetah, the fastest mammal on earth, also lives here in the Serengeti. The vulture is the last link in the food chain. They're waiting for something to die or be injured. The Serengeti is the setting for one of the greatest natural spectacles in the world. There is no other landscape that shows off the magic of the African wilderness in a more impressive way than this nature reserve. In the early morning hours before sunrise, a few brave people begin an unforgettable adventure. A journey in a hot air balloon above the Serengeti. The highlight of any safari. Majestically and almost without sound, the hot air balloons fly above the savanna. From here, the beauty and dimensions of the landscape below become obvious. The passengers enjoy this unique and satisfying experience. The Garden of Eden really does exist. Following a safe landing, the journey across Tanzania continues by road. Asphalt roads indicate human habitation.
In recent years, the small town of Moshi has developed into a busy tourist center for those visiting nearby Mount Kilimanjaro. The coastal areas of Tanzania and former caravan routes have been strongly influenced by Arabian culture. For centuries, the local traders had commercial connections with various Arab countries until European colonials came to this region. At the end of the 19th century, Tanzania was occupied by the Germans who integrated this country into their colony of German East Africa. The origin of the Selous game reserve dates back to German colonial rule, when this nature reserve was very much smaller. Now the Selous game reserve covers an area of 50,000 square kilometers. It's the largest protected game reserve in the whole of Africa. But not all of the reserve is open to the public. In the southern section, big game hunting is still permitted on a strictly controlled basis. The Rufiji River is the lifeline of this unique world. Annual rainfall here is extremely scant. Nevertheless, the Rufiji contains more water than any other river in East Africa. The river supplies huge herds of plant eaters with water. This in turn attracts the king of animals, the lion. The local people were asked to abandon their settlements within the nature reserve, a measure designed to assure the survival of this magnificent landscape. Dar es Salaam, Harbour of Peace. The name of this East African metropolis highlights the special significance of the harbour for the three and a half million inhabitants of this city that has a great cultural heritage. Both old and new stand side by side and create a most remarkable and captivating scene. A visit to the historic fish market is a special adventure for each visitor, and not only for those who enjoy fish, although today's catch looks very appetizing indeed. In addition to freshly caught fish, there are also many traders who sell clothing and a multitude of various other practical items of daily life. Just off the Tanzanian coast is the legendary island of Zanzibar. Once feared because of pirates, but at the same time appreciated for its marvelous spices. In the ancient town of Stone Town, several buildings have been restored and now shine out once again in all their historic glory. In the 19th century, the cultivation of cloves made this island rich and famous. The exotic atmosphere of the various markets in Stone Town has remained right up to the present day and is reminiscent of Arabian bazaars. But Zanzibar also had its darker times. Under the rule of the Sultan of Oman, the island became the center of the slave trade for the whole of East Africa. Where once many innocent slaves were shipped to distant lands, various dhows lie at anchor, fishing boats of traditional Arabian design. At 
the end of the 19th century, Zanzibar lost its importance in the slave trade. Today, the wounds of the past seem to have healed, and the beauty of the evening light in the sky above the historic harbour and town adds a reassuring calmness. Africa, the dark continent, one of the finest places on earth, and home to some of the world's last great nature reserves.